Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a spacer block set for my hydraulic forge press. So quick project today, I'll be making a couple of tools to help me out in forging with my hydraulic forge press. You know, it's not uncommon to want to reduce stock to a particular thickness on a press. Uh, it might be when you're making uh, twist Damascus, you twist it up, it sort of turns into a big cylinder and you want to squash it down to a flat bar. It might be that you're breaking down some big piece of stock, whatever, but very common. You want to flatten it out and flatten it to a particular thickness. Now, of course, you can measure it while you forge and you'll get pretty close, but you got 25 tons of mojo or whatever your press has got on your side and it's pretty easy to overshoot. Or you can just have a bunch of variation so it kind of goes up and down and that's going to result in you having to do a whole lot of grinding and takes extra time, extra material. So if you want it dead on to a particular thickness, it can help to have some sort of spacer that you just insert into your dies and it keeps it nice and consistent. So that's what we're going to do today. Just a little thing, you can slap it in there and be really consistent when you're forging something out to a particular dimension. <laughs> These spacers will be designed to drop right on top of my flatting dies. They'll be easy to drop on, hands-free, there's no handle to hold on to while I'm forging, easy to use, easy to remove. I'll begin by cutting some stock to form the spacers. In this case, one inch and then three quarters of an inch thick. Machine shop type tolerances are not the program. These things will get hot, they'll get banged on, they'll get distorted. So you want to make sure there's plenty of room back to front for them to move around. So that means cutting them off a little bit oversized. These blocks will be held together by a pair of straps. And those straps will also serve to keep these spacers from falling off the die. I'll just use a scrap piece of rebar for the job. This is dope simple blacksmithing. I'm just forging a rough U-shaped bracket, then flattening it so it'll mate more easily with the spacer blocks. The idea here is you just want it to lap over the top of the die enough to hold it on, but not so much that it interferes with the die so the blocks won't lie flat. Next, it's time for me to show off my golden welding skills. In all seriousness, welding with flux core, you're never going to get that beautiful row of dimes they always show you in the welding instruction books. As long as it holds though, right? Now I've tack welded the parts together, then once they're stuck, I'll get the clamps out of the way and lay in the final welds. rinse and repeat with a three quarter inch block. Over at the grinder, I'll smooth things out and get rid of some of the weld spatter. Of course, you can use an angle grinder if you want to be Joe Welder, but I'm a knife maker, so I'd use a belt grinder to turn trees into two by fours. 
In fact, I once carved a 1 to 12 scale model of a P51 Mustang out of a single block of titanium with my belt grinder. After the cleanup, I welded on a stub handle. I don't want a big long handle because I don't want it interfering with the work or causing a potential crush point for my fingers. This is something you always need to be aware of when you're sticking tongs and handles and all kinds of other gizmos into a hydraulic forge press. For similar reasons, I want the handle curved away from the working surface of the die so it sort of slopes downward. Since I'm doing this for a video, I'll hit it with a little spray paint so it looks all full of tactical awesomeness. And there it is, ready to square up some Damascus. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!